Good morning, I'm Bo. This is my presentation on beat frequency for It's probably best to start by hearing what beat frequency is. So let's start with just a 440 hertz tone. And then a 441 hertz tone. And then let's play those two frequencies together. What you hear is called the beat frequency. The equation for the beat frequency is the absolute value of the differences, the difference between the two frequencies, which is why this beat frequency is one hertz or one cycle every second. And this is, this beat frequency is two hertz or two cycles every second. And then three hertz and so on. Now that, now that you know what beat frequencies sound like, let's make sure you know why beat frequencies happen. When two sinusoidal frequencies are close to one another in frequency, their two wave patterns look like this. Actually, let's overlap the two waves to better understand how the wave interference works. Hopefully you can see that the two waves alternate between being in phase and therefore constructively interfering with one another to create a larger amplitude and then being out of phase and therefore destructively interfering with one another to create a smaller amplitude. When this happens, the amplitude of the two combined waves increases and decreases at the beat frequency, and that is why you hear beats. We can go back to the original example I had you listen to and show you the waveform for one beat. You can see the waveform for one beat has the same shape as the black wave, which is the superposition of the two waves close to one another in frequency. Again, because both waveforms show beat frequency. The top wave is the audio recording of beats, and the bottom wave is an ideal representation. A practical application of this is that beats are a useful way to tune some musical instruments. For example, on a guitar, the fourth harmonic of the low E string is at the same frequency as the third harmonic of the A string. So this is the E string, and this is the first harmonic on the E string. This is the second harmonic on the low E string. And just so you know, I am holding my finger gently on the string and not pushing down to create a node at this point and to force harm a harmonic at this point. So this is the second harmonic, the third harmonic, and the fourth harmonic on the low E string. And this is the A string, so this is the first harmonic on the A string, this is the second harmonic on the A string, and the third harmonic on the A string. Therefore, when you play the fourth harmonic on the low E string and the third harmonic on the A string, you should not hear any beats because the two are in tune with one another. However, if one of the strings is slightly out of tune, then what you hear is beats. And what you can do is you can then adjust the frequency so you no longer hear beats and the two are in tune with one another. One more time. So again, if one of the strings is slightly out of tune with the other one, you hear beats. And what you can do is adjust the frequency so you no longer hear beats and the two are in tune with one another a practical application of beat frequency. Thanks for learning with me. It was fun. Yeah. <laughs>